back to our channel Teaching and Learning. In this channel, we mainly talk about business English, business communication as practice, uh, English language, and other many important you know, topics and subjects. Today, in this video, is I am following the series of business English, of mainly designed for the instance of BBS business bachelor in business studies. So today in this video, I am going to um, uh, describe, interpret the whole level interpretation, description of unit 4. Before uh, I start for the whole level interpretation, the title of this unit is Actions and Consequences. As I have already mentioned that we should learn something from the title also because title also gives us many ideas about what we study in the coming lesson so the title is action and its consequences the lesson first is the parrot in the cage i have made the note for you like this look at so this is unit 4 from golden flax tales and this is chapter uh, you know unit 4 the title is action and consequences number one the parrot in the case this text is a poem composed by Lekhnath Paudya and uh, you know rather than talking about the background information let's move towards the assimilation through assimilation we can easily understand the poem okay I'm going to read okay the poet talks about the agony Agony means a kind of suffering, you know. Agony, uh, fear and frustration of a parrot in the cage. The parrot has been trapped and kept in the cage. He does not like to stay in the cage. The text describes all the sorrow, pain, torture, frustration and cry of the bird. The bird tries to escape from the cage, but every task becomes meaningless, but only hurt himself physically and psychologically. Look at the scenario over there. You know, here is a bird which is in a trap, in a cage. And he really wants to escape from that cage and go and live the very free life, whatever he likes. He really wants to get freedom from that, but his all attempts becomes meaningless, meaningless for time. But when he hurts himself physically and psychologically, he laments saying that there is no one to understand his feelings, emotions and brief grief. He crosses the time and situation because he was there almost forever. Poet is not that this poem is not that much, you know, confusing or ambiguous. The meaning is very clearly mentioned over here. The parrot is in the cage and this poem describes clearly about the many, you know, uh, desires, suffering, sorrow, pain, torture and frustration, let's say the cry of the bird. He tries to escape from it but he cannot do. And in this situation, he has expressed his feeling and the poet has beautifully presented his feelings, his suffering, his pain and torture through this poem. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is uh, very interesting. Let's move to the interpretation. Interpretation, as I have mentioned that interpretation means what we can understand by reading this poem. What is the message? How we can interpret it? How we can describe it? How we can understand? What might be the moral lesson of this uh, you know, poem? By this poem, what the writer wants to convey to the reader? Okay, let's see from my side. The poem can be interpreted into two ways. Mainly, this poem can be interpreted into two ways. First one indicates and suggests the human not to keep the birds and animal in their control. 
the first and very clear message of this poem is not to keep any animals or birds or insects into cage or into their control. Sometimes what we think, you know, we make the, you know, some animals uh, who really wants to live in jungle or in freedom in the sky, but we really, you know, put them into the cage. We think that we have given them the very beautiful and tasty food. We are looking after them. We are spending our resources and our concentration, let's say time, to take care of them, but they are not happy. If you put a parrot in the cage, whatever food you give to him, whatever you know, service he provides for his happiness, he is not going to be happy. Bird is to fly freely in the sky. So, let the birds and animals live, their, uh, live in their freedom rather than putting them into cage or in control. That is the main message. Because the jungle is their home and they can be pleased and satisfied in our control whether we try our best to keep them happily and satisfactory. Whatever we do to put them, to, to you know, keep them happy and satisfied, their real happiness is possible whenever they are in jungle. They live freely. Sometimes they don't have food, sometimes they don't have proper place to live in the night. But Still, since there is freedom, they are happy. That's the main message. The second interpretation is everyone first needs freedom. This is the main message you know, of this poem. This poem can be interpreted that first requirement for the happiness, first requirement for the creativity, first requirement for the you know, satisfied life is freedom. If you have freedom regarding your job and duties, regarding your choice of the you know favorite food or clothes, regarding your how you are going to spend your free time, weekend or leisure time, freedom is the first requirement for the happiness, satisfied and complete life. Freedom gives us choice and option which leads us towards happiness or at least to satisfaction. If we have freedom, we will be happy. Because in freedom we have choice. There is no obligation. Whether you work in the weekend or not, if you have freedom, if you work, again you will be happy. Because you are doing these things from your heart, from your side. If you go for, you know, tour, if you go for movie, then again you will be, if you go for outing, then at that time also you will be happy. At least you will be satisfied because you are doing the things on the basis of your choice and freedom. There is no obligation. So, by, the, uh, by this poem, indicating the sorrow, pain, suffering and torture of the parrot which is in the cage, it's equally similar to the human also. If we are suppressed, Politically, if we are suppressed from in the name of culture, in the name of you know religion, in the name of our you know historical uh, rules and regulations, then you know we will not be happy, we will not be satisfied because human in its nature wants to be free. Then only he can go for the better performance. That's the main message of the poem. Yes, I am very much convinced with this poem. And critical thinking, even though the poem is very convincing and it has a very strong message that freedom is the first requirement for everything, not only you know achieve, achieving objectives or goals for the satisfy, satisfaction, happy and prosperous life. Freedom is the first requirement because it gives you option, it gives you choice to do or not to do. To if you, you want to do, to what extent you really want to spend your energy and effort, time and resources. That's give you a kind of satisfaction and happiness in your life. Now let's move to the critical thinking. The poem gives uh, the good message, but there are some questions, uh, some, some doubt where we can raise some questions. Okay, let me raise some questions, okay, regarding this poem. Can bird think like human? Do you think? Can they express, can they feel sorrow? Well, so uh, can a bird 
think like human. That's the main question. Does not a cage uh, function one kind of safety? Because of the cage also the bird can feel uh, it is in shape and other threat, other challenges are not there for him. How a bird can remember the jungle and its friend for a long time? Bird cannot have the feeling of frustration and lament. And can all the bird live their happy and satisfactory life in the jungle? Does it mean releasing from the cares can lead to us the achievements of all the desired, desired things? So these are the questions that we can raise over here. You know, what about the you know, problems of the bird if we release it from the cage? Can it all be solved immediately? Is cage the only one problem for the bird? Is it the, you know, obstruction for its happiness and excitement? So these are the questions we can raise over here in this poem. And that we can simply talk in critical thinking. Let's move towards the, you know, assimilation. So in assimilation, you know, let me put it like this way. It will give you more. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, assimilation. This poem led me to the realization of the need and requirement of freedom, even to the birds and animals. So freedom is very important for a human. I have learned these things from this poem. Even though the poem is about the parrot which is in the cage, but it gives me the very clear cut picture regarding the importance of freedom for human life. If birds and animals are not happy in others' control, even though they, their physical needs have been fulfilled, the food they have been received time to time, but they are not happy. So what about human? Human really wants to be free. He, he wants to live in option, freedom, so that I used to feel romantic and pleased seeing and playing with the birds in the cage, but I realize that they feel far different way than we assume. Whenever we put parrot in the cage and we play with them, but what is going on in the feeling of the parrot is very serious things that we need to understand. I understood of their pain, suffering, grief and frustration. In a case, one should respect even the freedom of bird and animals. We often talk about the freedom of human. So what about the freedom of bird and animals? That is also very serious things that the human should think about. It. So in this way, we have finished uh, the first, you know, uh, first lesson of the unit four, action and consequences, the parrot in the cage. It is simply, let me put it in a very simple, you know, paragraph, this poem is composed by Leknath Paudel, mainly describes about the suffering, torture, pain, frustration of the bird which is in cage. And he remembers the freedom of the jungle, how he could be, you know, happy and satisfied when he, he would be with his friends over there in the jungles. And here in the parrot, cage, the parrot tries to escape from it but can't escape. It can just hurt himself physically and mentally. So this is all about that one. And through this poem, you know, the poet tries to advocate the need and importance of, you know, freedom for the human society and even in the nations. Indirectly, he is highlighting the value of democracy. Every person has the right how he is going to live his life, what he wants to do for his livelihood. And these are the very important messages through poem, this poem we can understand. Now let's move to the, you know, unit, same unit, unit 4. Under this action and consequences, this is a sound of thunder. This is more technical and it is all about the you know, scientific perspective regarding the human's developments, how we are moving and which direction we are moving ourselves. So this text 
may only talk about that rather than describing it uh, you know let's move towards the four level interpretation so the title is a sound of thunder you know thunder when there is a you know uh, thunder in the summer season when there is raining before that there is thunder there is electricity in the sky assimilation the story is set in 2055 a hunter named Eccles goes on the adventure of a lifetime traveling back to the past on a a uh, prehistoric safari to kill a tyrannosaur uh, rex is the participants went wait to depart they chat about the recent pre uh, presidential election in which apparently uh, fascist candidate dutsler had just been uh, defeated had just been defeated Mm. then uh, by the more moderate cave to the relief of many people the two guides kill the dinosaur and shortly afterward the tree that would have killed the dinosaur in the absence of human interve- intervention falls on the crops despite uh, his earlier eagerness to begin the hunt He calls Lujas is now at the side of the T-Rex. Travis tells him he cannot leave, but he calls panics and fears of the fact. Upon returning to the present, he calls notices subtle changes. English words are now spelled strangely. People and buildings are different, and worst of all, uh, these slurs. has won the election in the city of Keith looking through the mud on his boot he calls find a crossed butterfly whose death was apparently the cause of the changes he pleads to uh, Travis to take him back into the past to undo the damage but Travis refuses and fires his rifles it is left untold what he shoots although it is presumed that he kills ecols the dark ending reveals that the title not only refers to the sound of thunder made by the t-rex the story final words are there was a sound of thunder there was a sound of thunder the encounter with the tyrannosaurus forms the heart of the story with bad beauties ilo quint prose transporting the reader along with the hunting epidemic editions 60 million years into the past while Brad Bury does not does it an excellent job illustrating the point he tends to over simplify the ripple effect since the assumes the timeline to be static and that by removing the mouse from the equation a void is created that multiplies up the timeline it seems more likely that true effect might be equally as dramatic but unfolding over time in a much more dynamic way using brad bury's examples a lack of mice might mean something other than the fox evolves the thrives on the land or perhaps the fox adapts to another food source altogether it's an interesting coincidence that brad bury chooses a butterfly to symbolize the chaotic effect multiplied over time the term butterfly uh, the term uh, butterfly effect did not originate uh, with this tale but rather was coined after mit research meteorologist edward Lorenz who discovered in the early 1960s that small variation in his computer model caused widely divergent results Lorenz later went on to write a seminal paper on chaos theory based on his experience more importantly they discovered that the uh, presidential election 
no, sorry, in this, you know, uh, story, what we can understand is the writer has presented one tour, you know, a historical tour. It's uh, in, which is assumed in, you know, in 20, uh, 55, 2055, and a hunter named Eccles goes on the adventure of lifetime traveling back into the past on the prehistoric safari to kill the dinosaur Rex. So, this first line only indicates that what our science and technology, what our innovation is trying to explore. We are trying to, uh, you know, violate the natural order or we try our best to make uh, to indicate that we are very superhuman so because of which here are the consequences in the story that's we did in this you know literal comprehension now let's move to the interpretation what does it mean the author tries to use a series of unique describing techniques because the story is full of surprise so this story is full of surprise. It gives the idea that the sound of thunder is the consequence of meshing with nature and its power and from breaking the balance in time. So look at the person in 2055 AD wants to travel, go for the safari to the prehistoric period at the time of dinosaur or trinosaur. So it is what we are doing is we are trying to violate the law, order and system of the nature. If we do something like that, the consequences of it will be very negative. This story is directly attacking today's science and technology, to the innovation, discovery of present day world. What we are trying to do in the name of discovery, in the name of innovation, we are trying to control the natural laws. We are trying to violate the time order and so many natural things of the earth because of which we are facing the consequences like this in the story. Uh, the author tries to describe the nature as the delicate and very sensitive thing and he, uh, he means to say don't mess with nature and don't break the balance in time. Two things are very important through this story the writer tries to say. We can interpret this story into two ways. First one is nature is very delicate. Nature is very sensitive. We should not play with nature. And we cannot violate the balance in time because from Sunday uh, the Monday comes and from Monday to Tuesday, in the same way, the historical hollow of time also has some sort of mechanism with its nature. Otherwise, if we try to disturb, try to disbalance, dismantle, these all things will have very negative consequences. In the name of whatever we do, in the name of science and technology, in the name of innovation, if we try to violate, if we break the sensitivity of the nature, then we will have very negative consequences. That's the interpretation of this, you know, story of this text. Now let's move to the critical thinking, okay? Uh, here, obviously, we have many questions. We have many doubts regarding this text, you know. How a person from the first doubt in my, you know, mind, what I'm thinking is, how a person can dare to travel to the prehistoric time as a safari, in the date of 2055. That's the man confusing, man, uh, you know, thing or aspect I am not convinced with. Let's see some of the more points over here. Critical thinking. Even though the story suggests the good message about the time and systematic change in the universe and human thinking, how can people travel back in the ancient time or beginning of the creation or something like that? Is it possible to uh, violate the time order? Does a mistake of human intervene the natural law? 
Does a mistake of a man may destroy the whole civilization and balance between the between among the insects, animals, and human? Don't people make many mistakes knowingly or unknowingly every day? So why this is happening over here? One, there are so many questions. A stupid person can do something a blunder, but does it violate? Does it destroy, kill, and sweep the whole human civilization? Does it break the entire ecosystem of insect, animals and human? Obviously no, because we human are very stupid. We are making mistakes every day. But again, the earth, the environment, the ecosystem, the time order, natural law, natural system, natural rule has been maintaining everything in the time order. So it's beyond the human control. It's beyond the human imagination. But again, why the writer tries to reflect a picture where the entire civilization comes in danger because of the mistake of one person. So this is the main issue we can raise over here. These are some doubts. These are some aspects where we are not that much confident and we cannot be that much fully convinced from those ideas. This is all about in literal, uh, you know, this critical thinking. Now let's move to the assimilation, how it has affected to my life, how I am influenced from this story. After reading the, reading the text, I realized that one should not go beyond the natural law. More importantly, I will not desire the thing beyond my situation and circumstances. A man, how a man can desire how a man of 20, 2055, 2055, 2055, imagine to go at the time of dinosaurs and do something like hunting, which is very ridiculous. After reading this text, I have understood that I will not try, or I will not attempt those things which are beyond my control, which are beyond my time. It is meaningless. It's a stupid idea to try to go beyond of the time, beyond of the situation and circumstances and violate the natural law. Whatever the human have discovered, whatever the human have invented, nature is hundred times better than human creation and whatever. So natural law, we need to respect natural law, we need to follow it and on the basis of which we can try our best to make our life comfortable and convincing. That's the main thing we have understood from this text. So what should I do? And there is another another you know the text also that is where we can say uh, this is sound of thunder and um, you know no smoke from the chimney lesson 3 it's a very beautiful poem beautiful creation however it you know, express the pain and suffering of the people, but the creation is very beautiful, very lovely. And the poet has tried his best to um, reflect, to project the feeling of the people, okay? No smoke from the chimney. You can see the poem at the side of this, uh, in, in, in this video, you know, on the side of me, beside me, there is, you know, here is, uh, this poem. So, no smoke from the chimney. Uh, this poem is composed by Siddhi Charan Sarast. He is a Nepali poet. And, uh, you know, let's go to the four level interpretation. Before we go four level interpretation, let's see what does it mean, the title. No smoke from the chimney. If people have not cooked, if there is no food to cook, then there will not be the smoke in the chimney. Okay, let's do the more things from the poem. First of all, let's move towards the literal comprehension. Well, so um, 
No smoke from the chimney. Composed by Siddhi Charan Sarestha. This is also uh, the second lesson of action and consequences. Let's see some from the four level interpretation. First of all, literal you know, um, comprehension. The situation is very painful. The poet requests the death not to call him because he is busy in mopping up the blood from a broken head. He further requests the lady not to detain his feet since he has to do for those people who are struggling and canceling their meals. So here the poem is very short. You can see here by this, you know, the poem also. Poem is short. Here the poet Siddhi Charan Sarestha expresses the very painful situation where he is busy to that extent that he tells the death, hey death, don't come because I have to move. Move, you know, something like this. Move, this is the cloth. So, uh, head is broken and what you can do is you can just, you know, through the cloth, you can moping, moping the blood, you know, from there. So, here the poet is busy in mopping the blood from the broken head. And he says to the lady that not to, you know, not to detain her leg, not to make her disturbed because he has to do something for those people who have been struggling a lot and cancelling their food. So here mainly two things are very important. In one side, the poet reflects, poet is counselling, poet is ordering, poet is requesting to the death in one side, to the lady on the other side. So here, this is a beautiful, you know, creation, beautiful creation of the poem. And uh, this is all about the, you know, literal comprehension. Literal comprehension, the poem starts from how the poet is addressing to the death not to come because he is busy in mopping the blood from the broken head in one side. On the other side, he is also trying to convince the woman, the lady, his girlfriend, his wife, whoever, not to disturb her now, not to detain, you know, not to hold him at home or in her love because he has to do something very important for those people who are struggling a lot and cancelling their food. This is all about literal comprehension. And what is the interpretation then? The poet tries to suggest how the responsibilities are important than the personal selfishness and after my minor touch. Our life is very short. And we should do something very special so that at the time of our demise, when we are in the deathbed, at that time we can smile, oh, I have lived the very meaningful life because I have completed my duty and responsibility. Can you say that kind of things at the death? Can I say that kind of thing at the death? Here, from this poem, the poet tries to, you know, convince us that don't look after for the very small thing. Don't look after for the entertainment and enjoy playing cards, drinkings, you know, going along to with the girls or women. These are very selfish activities. They are also necessary in our life. They also have the value. It doesn't mean that I am disrespecting girls or women. Here from this poem, the poet says that rather than concentrating yourself towards those things, in eating, entertainment, drinking, lady, casino, and you know, relax, beach, swimming, dancing, singing, there are some special duties and responsibilities that we need to fulfill before we demise, before we die. That's the main message the poet tries to express from this poem. This poem can be interpreted this way. I think that way. What do you think? The poem 
tries to explain those things, those scenarios. It's highlighting the necessity of our duty and responsibility in our life. We should sacrifice you know, our selfish desire. You know, these are the things that we need to do. If the people of country have been sacrificing their meals, the situation seems the demand, concentration and dedication. People are sacrificing their food. There is no smoke in the chimney. They are not cooking food. They are struggling. They are trying to achieve something. So at that time, as a good citizen, my responsibility is to help, is to support, is to stand along with them, those people who have rejecting their we have been rejecting their males and they have not cooked the food. So how can I go and play in the lap of a lady, beautiful lady and drink wine over there? So that's the message the poem tries to say from this. Uh, you know, the poet tries to say from this poem. So let's move to the critical thinking. Okay, obviously we, have, we can have critical thinking over here. Also there are some things that cannot be that much convincing in the real life ground, okay? The poem is composed in the image of natural calamities, but there are questions regarding some expression. Can the man stop the death from its desire? The poet is projecting, is uh, presenting the situation of natural calamities, where the poet is preventing death to fulfill its desire. He simply said that, Oh, death, stop there, I have something, I need to finish it, then only you can come and take me. So, something like that the poet is trying to say. But is it possible? Death, if it wants, it comes, wherever and whenever. So, that is one unconvincing you know, point where uh, we cannot give the hundred percent regarding these things. How a man even does not get a time to mop up the blood from the broken head. Where, in which situation they are not <coughs> getting time to mop the blood from the broken heads. There are hospitals, there are ambulances. People can call them and they can treat the people. We can think that way also. <coughs> Can people leave their meals for a long time? Etc. the, uh, you know, some points that where we can raise the questions. How can ordinary people sacrifice their meals? For what purpose? So, this is also not clearly mentioned in the poem, so it is not also not that much convincing. These are the areas where we can raise some questions, okay? This is in critical thinking. Now in assimilation, the poem led to realize that we should become patient and responsible in horrible situation. A man needs to help himself and others in this regard. I notice even the death can be manipulated. So I sympathize, sympathize and support the casualties. Look at, even the death can be manipulated if you have good heart. Because truth is there, reality is there, God is there, so they can protect you, you know, if you really want to support others, if you have the heart of supporting others, if you really want to help those people who are struggling in casualties, natural calamities, even the death can be manipulated. That is the main message. So after reading this poem, I have confirmed myself, I have realized that I will try my best to support those people who are struggling hard for living, who are in natural calamities, who are in physical and psychological trauma and problems. For them, I will support from my side, whatever I can. I will not be selfish. So this poem has reminded me to my roles and duties, responsibilities and duties in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you.